Good evening and welcome to our program. For the past few years, the members of the Inuvik Christian Assembly have been going to the regional hospital. There they sing carols and tell the Christmas story using the flannel storyboard to the residents and staff of the long-term care ward. Hope you enjoy our program. For Swangan, I'm Lawrence Rogers. Some of the prophets of the Old Testament foretold that there was going to be a Savior born. And Isaiah said, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin shall be with child, and, I will give, and she shall give birth to a son, and will call his name Emmanuel. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And we have, here is Isaiah, the prophet, and he was told that the names of the Savior that was going to be born would be the Mighty God, it would be the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and Wonderful Counselor. That was going to be the Savior's names when he was going to be born. For unto us is born...
One day the angel Gabriel came to visit Mary. This was Mary's home and Mary was just at home I suppose doing what she always did perhaps doing her housework, sweeping the floor, or getting ready for company. She was just cle cleaning in her house when all of a sudden uh, an angel appeared unto her. And the name of the angel was Gabriel. And Gabriel came to Mary and said, Mary, I have a message for you, a message from God directly for you. And the, and the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at the words that were spoken and wondered what kind of greeting this must be. But the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you will give him a name, call him Jesus. And he, he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. And then Mary, wondering at this message, couldn't figure it out. She looked at the angel and she said, she said, well, how? How is this going to all be? And the angel said to her, uh, since you're a virgin, the Holy Spirit will come to you and emp empower you of the Most High, will overshadow you. And so this Holy One that will be born of you will be called the Son of God. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. And because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man, she did not want to expose her publicly and make a disgrace out of her, so he had in mind that he would just divorce her. And Joseph was wondering what he was going to do. He wondered how this was all going to take place. So he went to bed. He thought, I better think this all over. I better, better just think it through here before I do anything. And so we find Joseph going to bed here. And he goes to sleep. And he's fast asleep. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, while he's sleeping, he has a dream. And in the dream... He sees a bright, shining angel coming and appearing in his room. And the angel talks to Joseph. And he says to Joseph, Joseph, I see you're kind of troubled. And Joseph said, yes, I'm really troubled. I, I don't know what to do. Mary's expecting a child, and, and I just don't know what, what I really should do. And the angel said to Joseph, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary, your wife. What's happened, it's been the Holy Spirit. She's going to have and bear the Son of God. She's going to have the Savior of the world. And so when Joseph woke up from his dream and the angel then was gone, Joseph was happy and he decided, okay, what's, what's happened is coming for God. God is going to send us a special son and his name is going to be Jesus, as the angel had instructed. And so now Joseph felt free to to take Mary to be his wife. Old little town of Bethlehem. Long before the prophet told that Jesus was going to be born in a very, very little town in Judea. And it was going to be a very insignificant town, one that wasn't real popular. And its name was Bethlehem. But it was going to have the most important event happen there because Jesus was going to be born there. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars will hide. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years 
those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken and that of the entire Roman world. Everyone was to go to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came the baby was to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in, cl in cloth, and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. <clears throat> the decree had been given for everybody to go back to their hometown, and if this was in the north, if you were born in a clavic, you'd have to go back to a clavic. If you were born in McPherson, you'd have to go back to McPherson. If you were born in Arctic Red River, you'd have to go back to Arctic Red River. And John was born in Tuck, so he'd have to go back to Tuck. And so would Moses. They'd have to go back to Tuck. We'd all have to go to our hometown where we were born to be registered. This was the decree given by the king at this time. And so Joseph knew that he had to go and back to Bethlehem. <clears throat> and so he decided to go back, but not realizing there was a lot of people that were going to be going to Bethlehem at that same time. A lot of people belonged to Bethlehem. And so at this time, scores of people are flocking down the road going to Bethlehem. And when he got to Bethlehem, the first thing he would do it was to look for a hotel or an inn, they were called. And if, you were, if this was up here in, in, in our town of Anuvik, we'd maybe try Fintel Motel first because that's the first one on the outside edge. We'd try that one first, wouldn't we? And so Joseph went to the door of the first inn and knocked on the door, and the innkeeper came, came out to greet him, and he said, Sir, do you have room in your inn? I need a place to stay. And uh, my wife is expecting a baby, and here he is. Here's Joseph, and he has brought his wife, let her sit on the donkey as she's expecting any day. And as they're traveling on, on their way, uh, no room, I'm sorry. Don't you realize that there's so many people that have come here, we're just packed right out. I don't have a single bed anywhere in my hotel. So again, if this was a Nuvik, he would we would go down the street and the next place we would get to would be the Eskimo Inn. And so we knocked on the door of the Eskimo Inn and said, is there any room of the next hotel in their town of Bethlehem? Is there any room? And uh, I need a place badly to stay. And he said, I'm sorry. Oh, I can see your wife is, is, is expecting a baby. I would do anything to, to give you a place, but my, just look at this place, it's just packed. This town, there's people everywhere. And my hotel is full right to the doors. I don't have a bed anywhere. And so they went on down the street of Bethlehem to the next place, no room, to the next place, no room. And each innkeeper said, no room at the inn. Finally they came to, maybe it was the last inn, I'm not sure. And they knocked on the door and the innkeeper came again and said to them, uh, they said, do we have any room? Please, we're so tired from our journey. My wife is expecting a baby anytime. We need a place to stay. And the innkeeper said, I'm sorry. I don't have any place, but I hate to say this, but I have a clean barn behind the hotel. It's got some clean straw in it, and you can stay there overnight. At least you won't be in the cold, and it, you won't have to be freezing. It's warm in there, and I'll see that you get a light. I'll put a lamp in there for you, and you could, you'll be able to see, and it's all clean. So Joseph said, thank you, thank you. We need a place so bad. That will be good enough for tonight. And so the innkeeper took him behind and took him into an inn, or to the stable, behind the inn where there was a stable. And Joseph and Mary then took the straw and moved it around to make a comfortable place for them to sleep for that night. Away in a manger.
And there were shepherds that were out in a nearby field, and they were watching their sheep over at nighttime. And as they were watching their sheep, there was a strange thing that appeared to them happen that night. And they stood there in quite total amazement, realizing that something different was happening for the whole sky lit up and they'd never been out there. They'd been out there many a night looking after their sheep, but they'd never saw a time when the whole sky lit up. And as the sky lit up, they saw an angel and an angel appeared in the sky and they got so scared that they, they almost wanted to duck away. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid, fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. This day, a, a great event has happened in Bethlehem. A Savior has been born. And when the angel said that, there was many other angels that appeared in the sky at that given time. There was, it says, a whole company of angels appeared in the sky. And there and they all had a message to bring, saying the whole works in unison, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And the shepherds were so excited when they heard that, they had not read about long ago that God was going to send a Savior, and now a message had come that the, shepherd, uh, the Savior had been born. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared to the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men, for rest rests on the you. Then the angels had left them and gone into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened. Let's go and find out. They said he's born in Bethlehem. Let's find out. Let's go to Bethlehem and see what's happened. And so they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread word concerning the things that they had seen and heard about the child. And all who heard the shepherds were very amazed. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea during the reign of Herod the king. The shepherds hurried and they came to Bethlehem. They were so excited they could hardly wait to get there. And they came and just as they had heard that there was going to be a star that was going to lead them, the star stopped right over this place, over the stable. The shepherds hurriedly decided to run in and see what was happening. And when they went in, there they found baby Jesus had been born. And they were so excited that the promise that God had made to them had taken place. And God said he was going to send a Savior who was going to be born as a little baby in Bethlehem's manger. And the shepherds, when they came, they bowed down 
before the Savior. They were so excited. They couldn't believe. They said, wow, here is Jesus, the one that God said he was going to send us. And they were so excited. And they bowed down in worship and praise the Lord because their Savior had been born in Bethlehem. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the king at that time was Herod. There was Magi that came from the east. Maybe you better know them as wise men. Came from the east. Where is the one that is born king of the Jews? We say this. We say we saw a star in the east. And we have come to worship him. And when King Herod heard this, he was troubled. And he was disturbed in his heart. And so he went to the people and to the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, where is this Christ that is supposed to be born? What do the scriptures say? In Bethlehem of Judea, they replied. And when Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time he had saw the star, he sent them to Bethlehem. He said, go and be careful. Search for the child. Very, very carefully. Find him. When you have found him, report to me. And let me know where he is. Because I want to go and worship him. And after they had heard, heard the king, they went their way. And as they got outside, again, the star started to move. And the star started, and they followed that same star that they had saw in the sky. And where that star went, they followed and the star led them to a house where they found Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. And it was there that they bowed down to worship and presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and her. many a mile following that star until the time come that they found baby Jesus. And it tells us that when they come, they knelt down with their gifts and they worshiped God. They were so excited to see the Savior. They were so glad God had sent his promise, the Savior that was going to come to the world. And they bowed down and they worshiped him and gave thanks to him for his goodness and, his, and for the Savior. Thank you for joining us this evening. Have yourselves a safe and happy holiday. Wishing each and every one the best of the new year. See you all again in 1998.